In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate everything pertaining to circular motion. The question reads, a grinding wheel of 30 centimeter diameter is rotating with angular velocity of 3.0 radians per second and slowing under constant acceleration of negative 3.0 radians per second squared. In the very first question, what is the angular velocity at 0.4 seconds? I want to start off by writing down everything I know for reference. So we're told that the diameter is 30 centimeters, which is the same thing as 0.3 meters. The angular velocity, which I'll represent by the Greek letter omega, is 3.0 radians per second. You may also write the angular velocity as 3.0 per second, so you don't need to write down radians. And the angular acceleration, which I'll represent as alpha, is negative 3.0 radians per second squared. Again, you don't need to write down radians at the top. You can simply write down seconds raised to the power of negative two or one over seconds squared. When it comes to these types of problems, circular motion, it helps to know these formulas. They're asking, what is the angular velocity at 0 0.40 seconds? Take a look at this very first formula, that very first relationship. We can find out the angular velocity. So I'll write down A. And that velocity that we're looking for is represented here by taking the initial velocity given in the question as 3.0 radians per second. I'll omit the units just for simplicity's sake. Plus, the angular acceleration is negative 3.0. Notice that I wrote down plus minus, but feel free to simply write down minus instead of these two symbols next to each other. Multiply to the time given in the question at 0 0.40 seconds. Now using our calculator, 3 minus 3 times 0.4 gives us a value of 1.8 radians per second. That's the answer for A. In question B, what angle has turned through in this 0 0.4 seconds? So using this relationship now, we can find the angle by taking the average of 1.8 and 3.0, you see how we add and divide by two, that's like taking the average, and multiplying it by 0 0.4. This will give us the angle in radians. So 1.8 plus three divided by two, that takes care of this part. Multiply 2.4 and that gives us a value of 0 0.96 radians. We found the answers to A and B, let's move on to C. What is the linear velocity of a point on the rim at 0 0.2 seconds? Now, linear velocity and angular velocity are related using this formula, where angular velocity is equal to the linear velocity divided by the radius. So we're looking for this part, V. I'll multiply both sides by R so that I isolate for V. I'll end up with omega times r is equal to v. Now, to find out information that we need on the left side to get v, specifically omega, again, I can use that very first relationship where I have the initial angular velocity being 3.0 plus negative 3.0 times 0.2. Essentially, I'm repeating the same calculation as I did in the first one. You will end up with 2.4 radians per second. That will get substituted right into there. And then we multiply that by the radius. So 2.4 radians per second multiplied to the radius being half of 0.3, which is 0 0.15. That's in meters. So multiplying these values out, 2.4 multiplied to 0 0.15 gives us 0 0.36 meters per second. Now for question D, with this acceleration, the acceleration given in the question, how long does it take for the wheel to come to rest? Now, if the wheel is coming to a rest, that means its velocity is equal to zero, or its angular velocity is equal to zero. That being said, I'll be using this relationship again and setting that omega, the final, equal to zero, because it's not moving. 
and the initial being 3.0 minus 3.0, I simply wrote down minus instead of plus minus, and the time is what we're looking for. So bringing this term over to the left side, I'm isolating for t here, I get negative 3.0 is equal to negative 3.0t, and dividing both sides by negative 3.0, makes one second. So it takes one second for this to come to a stop. For question E, how much angle is turned through in this time? So we need to use a formula that uses the angle symbol. Make sure you use this one because that also incorporates time. So I have theta is equal to 3.0, the time is one second plus 0 0.5 to represent that factor of half, times negative 3.0, 1 to the power of 2. All right, let's go ahead and do this. 3 plus 0 0.5 times negative 3.0 times 1 to the power of 2, which is 1, and you end up with 1.5 radians. You can easily convert that into degrees if you want to get a better idea of what that looks like. And lastly, how far does a spot on the rim travel in this time? For this, we have to use the relationship that relates the radius, the angle, and the displacement. I'll represent displacement as S, and it's calculated by taking the radius times what we found for the angle. So the radius was 0 0.15 times 1.5, which we just calculated, and the displacement is the number on your screen times 0.15, and that is 0 0.22 meters. You don't need to include the units of radians. Okay, I do realize that this has the units of radians and this has the units of meters, but radians is a phantom unit that you don't need to include, but you only include to make clear of what's being asked but it's not necessary in your final answer. And there you have it. That is how to calculate everything possible related to circular motion.